I knew I wanted to learn a new language. I knew I wanted to do something different, different than .NET. Probably because I've been doing .NET now for about um, five years. Um, I knew I needed something new, right? And I had just two options. Basically, I had um, Go and Rust. Uh, basically, basically because they are the only two language in that kind of space, right? Uh, they give you the vibes of C++, but then they also give you these modern vibes, right? So I knew I wanted to learn both of those. I started with Rust about last year, and I did it for about two weeks. That was when I was trying to create an Ngrub clone with Rust. Um, <laughs> it quickly became very difficult. I mean, Rust is... I don't want to say Rust is difficult because basically it's not difficult. But the honest truth is it has a steep learning curve. It has a steep learning curve because of um, certain design decision that the team that built Rust actually took. Of which if you're trying to if you're trying to create if you're trying to create tools, you're trying to create um, Maybe blockchain tools and the likes, not necessarily APIs. Um, I think Rust will be the way to go. And I think it, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Right? It really depends on what you're trying to do. If tomorrow I need to build a tool and Rust is the programming language that would enable me to build that tool, trust me, I'm going to get back to Rust. But as it is now, I started Go about late last year and boy, I think I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot and um, I'm going to be taking you on my journey and learning Go. If you would also want to learn Go, um, I think this would be a good watch for you. Probably to inspire you, probably to show you what's happening in Go, um, probably to also give you some few tutorials. Tutorials. It's, it's not going to be difficult for you at all if you've started, if you, not, if you are not new to programming, it's not going to be difficult for you at all. So firstly, I'd like to show you the book I'm using to learn Go. It is called Go in Action. You need to get this book. It is super important. It is super important. And this good is so, this book is so good. It's so good. Although I'm going to, I'm not going to recommend this book for beginners. If you're learning, <laughs> I'm not even sure you should actually learn Go as a beginner. I'm not sure. If you're starting up with programming language um, as a newbie, I think you should just pick up JavaScript. Pick up JavaScript and understand the nitty gritty of programming. But if you've already been programming in other languages, then obviously, sure, you can pick up Go. So I started with this book called Go in Action, and it has been really superb. It has been really superb. It really explains some certain things that you need to understand and yes you can do video tutorials but i think books are still very much important when it comes to learning um all of these um concepts all of this um, uh, programming language or whatever it is at all books are still very much important because books tend to explain certain things that you might not necessarily see in video tutorials um, go having garbage collection, sorry, excuse me, um, which makes you not worry about, it makes you not worry about um, trying to um, allocate memory or deallocate memory. And I think that is one reason why Rust is a little bit difficult, right? Because Rust does not have garbage collection. So that means you have, you have to you have to understand the concept of ownership right and understanding the concept of ownership and rust sophisticated type system ah uh, it is really crazy man it's crazy however i mean i've said if i need to if i need to build a tool that needs me to do rust for sure i would for sure do rust. so get this book it is very important i think if you want to learn go you should get this book is a must and also, I started following this particular guy. 
started following this particular guy. Um, his name is Nick Johnson, and he has a playlist where he was building Go Microservices. Although this was not the way I started, obviously I had to learn a few things, but obviously because I've been programming for some time now, so I'm able to follow through and yeah, I think I've been doing pretty well. So currently what you can see is a microservice um, that has a few API. I'm not using any package, I'm using Go internal libraries um, to build the server. This is basically the server go is actually really simple i give that to go it's very simple very simple you can build you can build great stuff with its simplicity go basically works on package level and you can import them into one another all right so basically what i have here is you have this go mod this is the module and then i have this um main.go so you want to see main.go like your main in your program.cs if you if you've done .net. It's so like your yeah, basically your entry point. All right. So this obviously is a variable and what this means is it is basically telling go to infer to infer what the type of this variable is going to be. So go can check what you're trying to assign and then infer the type of this variable and also go is going to declare the declare the variable and initialize the variable for you so you don't have to do you don't have to do anything so as long as you have this colon and equal to if you want to create other variables as well you can as well just do your you can do your var var um, log equal to whatever equal to a string whatever all right and go would not allow you use it um, declare a variable without using it so you'd have to use it somewhere hence this uh so basically what i'm doing here is creating a server you have this concept of server mocks so server mocks is the same way you have it is similar to how you have it um, in Express.js. If you've done Express.js or Node.js with Express.js, obviously, where you'd have to declare a path and declare an handler for it. This is the exact same way it is. And it's also the same in um, your minimal API. If you're trying to do, if you've done minimal API in .NET, that's the exact way it is. So basically what I'm doing here is saying all of the root requests should be handled by my product handler. I love things like this. Because basically if you're doing .NET, .NET is good. I'm still going to be doing .NET. I mean, I do .NET professionally. But there are certain things that you would not see. Certain things has been abstracted for you. So you would not really appreciate the way these things work right because it's been abstracted you, you don't get to see all of this all you just do is do app dot create server once you just do create server your server is created right but with this you can actually see it gives you a little bit um of internal details so you can see the way these things actually work internally and i think that's actually what inspired me to come towards this route I think if Go and Rust did not exist, I would have probably done C++. Come back to C++ because I really need to go back to a language that is closer to the metal so you can really see how these things work. But yeah, thank God for Go. So um, this, I, this is also a very interesting concept in, in Go, which is their concept of concurrency go helps you and i think that's why go is pretty fast very blazingly fast um go helps you to handle concurrence if you've ever done written a program whereby you'd have to manage uh, multiple processes uh, uh, within a particular application and whereby those multiple processes still has to share data share states 
you know it's a very difficult thing to do but with go go makes it very easy with the uh, with the concept of go routines and channels so it makes it very easy and then the concept of channel as well channel is basically a data structure that um, enables you coordinate data between between different um, um, different go routines so every of the routes that is coming in through this route is going to be going into the product handler now the product handler gets to decide what happens All right so this is obviously a get request this is a post request if it's a post request if it's an update request which i'm still currently working on and obviously there are functions that are attached to every one of them this is me getting my product this is me adding product and basically what i did is we are not going to database yet um all of the products is here it's just an it's just an in-memory product basically so and also go has this concept of struct struct right so you want to see struct as your class in dotnet struct is basically like your class but it's just simple the way the whole thing is it's just very simple right and your data types as well you have your ints you have your string you have your floats and and the likes yeah so far so good it's making a lot of sense and let's just run this quickly uh and go is blazingly fast i mean that's it <laughs> blazingly fast blazingly fast so i can just do so i've started the server started the server and this is basically just me using coil to make a request and jq is basically see this as pipe if you've done angular before so you understand this that's basically your pipe so i'm saying jq would help me present whatever the result is in a structured json format so let's do this so you can see right so because i am not specifying anything here this obviously will be taken as a get request of which if you go to my handler a get request is basically getting all of the products so that's what we have here so it returns all of the products we have in my database same in database in memory database all right and we could do the same thing as well as trying to add data so because i am passing data coil is able to to tell that this is a post request so if i do a post request now you see that this is a post request it did a post request now if i try to get this data again now you see the new data we added right so yeah that's that's basically all i've done with go and i think so yeah rust go um rust is a great language i'll continue to say um should i have need to do things in rust i'll surely go back to rust and learn it continue to learn it till i'm able to do whatever it is i have to do uh, but for now i think um i would keep writing go setting for go and i'll keep you posted on my journey in learning go thanks guys see you on the next one bye